Hey everyone! Hi there! <laughs> Welcome to another Make or Bake and today it is bake, unsurprisingly, because we're stood in the kitchen. We are stood in the kitchen and I'm going to wash my hands while Kat explains why she's wearing these unusual items in our oh. kitchen. Is this not where you were oh. to cook? Well, not normally. Oh. Well, obviously I am wearing my hat because today is St George's Day and um, I'm wearing a necker because St George is the patron saint of scouting. So very, very generously our St Matthew with Holy Trinity beavers, cubs and scouts have let me uh, wear one of their neckers today. I did used to be a scout quite a long time ago and um, so it's wonderful to be back in a necker for St George's Day. And later on today at 6pm, we're going to have a special evening prayer praying for our uniformed organisations. I'm not going to wear the hat for the whole thing, but Aww. just a nice intro to St George's Day. So now I'm going to wash my hands and Esther's going to explain what we're doing today. Well, we thought it would be really nice to continue the same theme of not using too many ingredients and making things that are really yummy to eat. So today we're going to not use any flour because it's really hard to get hold of in the shops. And today we're going to use some oats and some other things to make some flapjack. And Kat's come up with a title. I think we should call it St George's Flagjack. So we're going to make some flags to celebrate St George's. And they're you going don't to be... like the name, <laughs> <laughs> I think it's genius. <laughs> They're going to be decorated like the St George's flag. which St George's flag jack. <laughs> which is <laughs> the white with a red cross. You'll have seen it because it forms the centre of the Union flag. Are you good? Yeah, I'm okay. not, I won't say it again. Don't panic. <laughs> I'm going to turn the oven on. Um, the first thing we need to do is set the oven. As is a fan oven, so we're going to set it for 180. You might need to set yours for either 200 or gas mark 6. So that's 180 for a fan oven, 200 degrees Celsius for a non-fan electric oven and gas mark six if it's a gas oven. Fantastic. Okay. So it's quite simple this. We don't really need a mixing bowl. You can mix it in a mixing bowl first if you really want to, but to save on washing up, get a big saucepan out and some form of <coughs> spatula or wooden spoon or something like that. And we're going to measure in a standard size mug. So hopefully, even if you've not got weighing scales or posh cups or anything, standard size mug. Make sure you've finished your brew and you've rinsed it out first. But for the first ingredient, we don't even need a mug because oh. we've cut, uh, our butter comes in a butter shape pack. So if you're using margarine, you need just under half of a, um, a mug, but we're going to do our butter and we're going to cut it up using a sharp knife and it comes in a 200 gram uh, block so when I open it I need just slightly over because I need about 125 grams. So if you've got a block of butter from the shop like that then you can do it just just over half you need. And then you want to cut it into little pieces as well because we're going to melt it in our saucepan and it will take forever if it's all in one block. So. Just a reminder, obviously, we do hope that lots of children and young people are going to have a go at making our St George's flag jack. But uh, if you are younger, please make sure that you get somebody to help you, especially with sharp knives and especially with the hot hob. So, um, yeah, do definitely have a go, but make sure somebody a bit older is helping you out. So Esther is quitting up our butter and that's going to go straight into our saucepan. Meanwhile, I'm going to get the sugar ready and that's going to make our flapjack taste nice and sweet. So we've got some ordinary caster sugar here. They do recommend that you use, is it demerara? A yeah, or light brown. Or light brown sugar. You can mix a bit of muscovado sugar in with your white sugar. Not demerara, that's we the don't... wrong one. Yeah, demerara. Right. <laughs> Anything um, brown. <laughs> but we've run out and as you know, not everything's in the shop. So any sugar <laughs> that you've got will probably work just fine. And we want about half a mug of sugar. Um, just below half. If you like it really sweet, then you can go for half, but try and ration yourself. It's better for your teeth. <laughs> I'm going to turn the gas on and I'm going to turn it nice and low. So we don't want our butter to boil. We just want it to melt and Kat's going to add the sugar to it. So there's my sugar in there, about half a mug, just less than. I'm going to pop that in. in there. You can see it literally just goes in together. It's just the white powder on the butter and gradually it will form a really nice um, bit of like a, a syrupy mixture. 
Mm. Which, talking of syrup, next ingredient, oh. please. I need some golden syrup. Just to say, if you have an electric hob, ours is gas, then you probably just want it on about really two. Low. Something yeah, like two that. or three, somewhere really low. So the next thing we're gonna add in, one of my favorite things in the world, golden syrup. So hopefully you've got some of this kicking around in your store cupboard after pancake day or something <laughs> like that. I think that's where ours from. Yes. Um, but if you haven't got any golden syrup, that's completely understandable. And uh, this recipe will work if you put honey in instead. Yep. Exactly the same amount, but honey. If you've not got any golden syrup or any honey, I'm not quite sure what to suggest, but have a go and let us know what made it stick together. The worst that happens is that you get your flapjack out of the oven and it's not really stuck together, but it still tastes quite good. So There is a suggestion on the very wise internet that if you mash up some banana, that mm. helps it stick together. So if you don't have any of these sticky things, add some banana. What's the worst that could happen? You get a delicious tasting, uh, lovely gooey mixture. So I've got a one tablespoon uh, measure here. If you haven't got a tablespoon measure, just get a really big spoon and fill it up with golden syrup. And we're gonna put two of these in. Oh, three. Three, three I think. Please. To make it nice and sticky. Oh, also nice. because I do have quite a sweet tooth. <laughs> so that is number one. This does have a habit of going everywhere, but that's all part of the fun. Number two, going straight in there. And it's really important, like Esther's doing, that you keep stirring your mixture that's on your hob because otherwise um, your sugar might burn if it's not been constantly stirred in with the butter. It helps the butter to melt and if it's moving three. around as well. So. And it does help the butter to melt mm -hmm. faster, you're absolutely right. So that's three tablespoons of golden syrup into there. Lovely. There we go, lovely job. If no one was looking, Kat would be licking that spoon. Yeah, totally would. It. I might so just can go off screen to do it now. <laughs> it's turned into this kind of gloopy mixture, so my butter hasn't quite melted yet. So I'm going to keep going until it's a complete liquid. So we want it to be almost uh, quite clear. At the moment, it looks a bit like yellow glue. Not that. <laughs> Not that appetising right now, but it will taste lovely in the end. Okay. And then the final key ingredient that you absolutely need is some porridge oats. Now we've just got regular porridge oats here. If you've got jumbo oats, that mm. will work. Um, so just any kind of oats, hopefully you can get hold of some of those. And we need two completely full mugs of oats. So I'm gonna fill my mug up there with my porridge oats. Now, Esther's still just melting that. So we're gonna have a little bit of a think about St. George. So as we've said, today is St. George's Day and I know um, a lot of people who are in uniformed organisations would usually do some sort of parade on St George's Day because St George is the patron of Scout and I know the Girl Guides quite often join in with those parades as well which is absolutely brilliant. St George is also of course the patron saint of England and that's why um, the flag is the English flag now. St George is associated with all sorts of stories. There's all these myths and legends are built up around him, lots of fascinating stories. But St George actually lived about 1700 years ago. He lived, um, we think, probably for most of his life in the area of Palestine. Um, today's area of Israel and Palestine is where he would have been around as a Roman soldier. And St George actually died for his Christian faith. He was courageous in standing by his faith and sticking to his faith even when the Roman Emperor said you can't be a Christian you cannot worship the Christian God he stuck by it and was killed for his faith so um, the flag actually um, came along later and there's again quite a lot of stories about the flag which I won't dip into now but if we think about that cross on the St George's flag it's a little bit reminding us of the cross that we put on our hot cross buns just a couple of weeks ago and St George went to well went to his death for his faith knowing that actually that was the good and right thing to do to not forsake his faith to not deny his faith or pretend to be something other than a Christian because he knew that Jesus had died for him so he was willing to die for Jesus how amazing is that and he also knew of course that Jesus rose again from the dead so he didn't fear death and he could go into that knowing that he would rise again and be with Jesus. So I think you've stopped stirring. I have stopped stirring. We have made a sort of yellow soup 
which I don't know if you play. can see that all oh, in the pan. It's a bit, a bit further. Oh, oh. Do do oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so try to keep it in the pan. You can see it's nice and runny and it's ready to mix in. I've turned the heat off. You don't need the heat on. We're just using this as a mixing bowl now, but be careful because the saucepan is still hot. So, uh, oats, how many did you so say? So, one completely full mug of porridge oats going in there. And was there two, did you say, yep. was the final amount? And so I'm going to fill up again. I'll give that a good stir to get us going. With porridge oats. So, two completely full mugs. Are you ready? I'm ready. Here we go. And it looks like all of your liquid is disappeared. It looks like it's all soaked in and it becomes uh, a bit stiff. And what you want to keep going is... This will be easier to see. <laughs> if you keep going so that you don't have all these dry bits, I'm going to keep going until they're all covered in the goo and they're all a little bit shiny. So just keep mixing and mixing till they're all shiny in there. And while Esther does that, I'm just going to get a little bit of our butter and rub it onto our baking tin. So we're using a square baking tin about this big. <laughs> if you don't have one of those, then you don't need one of those, that's okay. You can make it in something a little bit like a casserole dish if you've got something like that. If you've got an ordinary circular cake tin, you can make a circle and then just cut your squares out of the middle. If you've got a um, shallower, that's mm -hmm. the word, <laughs> baking tray that you maybe put chips on or something like that, you can do it in that. It will just be slightly thinner and so reduce your cooking time so it doesn't burn. And um, this baking tray is a 20 centimeter by 20 centimeter square if you use the round ones quite often they're nine inches is the normal size anything around that sort of size it's basically a bit bigger than my hand <laughs> so I'm just getting a little bit of butter and rubbing it all over the bottom of the uh, baking tray and up the sides as well because otherwise we will have lovely flapjack but we won't be able to get it out which would be a little bit of a shame so a little bit more and there, make sure that's nice and covered. There we go. Do you want to tell these lovely Ooh, people, sorry. if I add just a little bit more butter cat, do you want to tell these lovely people about the um, other ingredients that they could add if they wanted to make this a tasty option? Absolutely. So like we said, we've tried to keep it as simple as possible. I'll just move that out of the way, can we? Um, so that you've hopefully got the ingredients for this flapjack at home. However, you can make flapjack exciting in all sorts of ways. So if you want to add some dried fruit to the mix, sultanas, raisins, anything like that, then chop a few of those up and put them in at this point. If you want to add some chocolate, which we're going to do because I like chocolate, then you can put chocolate drops in or if like us, you've not got any chocolate drops, just get some chocolate Half. and chop it up. Yep. Nice so and easy. Very important though that you don't add this until the last minute because as soon as you add it to something warm, it will start melting. So if you're using chocolate, wait until the last moment to add it. So. And if you want to feel healthy, I'm oh, not yes. saying it makes it healthy, but if you want to feel healthy, <laughs> then you could put in some mashed up banana and oh, yeah. or you could put in some orange rind for a nice kind of citrusy flapjack. <laughs> Not rind. Not right juice. Don't do that. No, zest. 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 zest is That's the word the you're word. looking for. Rind is there the is a reason beefy white that stuff. I don't do make and bake on my own, make and bake, <laughs> because it would be a disaster. The, 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 the rind is the white pithy bit. Oh no, no don't, don't, don't put that in. I've learned something today. I hope <laughs> you've learned something too. So Esther is just gently stirring in our chocolate oh. chips chunks, whatever you would call chopped up chocolate. You can tell it's not Lent now, can't you? <laughs> yeah. And then we're going to put all of our mixture into our baking tray. So we just literally tips the saucepan up and we're pouring it all in. Make sure you don't spill all waste honey. Um, and then we're going to push it down with the side of the spatula. Try to resist licking the spatula. It does look really good. <laughs> it doesn't taste that great until it's cooked, no. to be honest. I do, um, I do tend to eat cake mixture before it's cooked, but not flapjack mixture. It's just That's a disgusting oops, fact that I've just confessed to. There we go. <laughs> Lots of people are thinking I do that too. <laughs> so it's nice and thick, and like Kat was saying, the, um, the size of your pan is what makes it different thickness. So if you're going to use a thinner pan, you need to make your cooking time maybe a little bit less so that it doesn't get too crispy. So if it's really deep, you need to cook it for a long time. It's Longer. really shallow, shorter mm -hmm. time. So we're gonna, I've just, I don't know if you saw me do that, but I've really squashed it down so it's nice and flat on the top and hopefully won't move around too much in the thing. 
uh, in the oven. I'm going to stick it in for about 15 minutes. And I'm saying about because your own oven will cook at a slightly different speed. So you need to just check the colour on the top because we want it to be a bit squishy, but we don't want it to fall apart. So a nice golden brown crispy top is a good thing to have. Yeah, excellent. Straight in the oven. Okay, so again, be nice and careful putting these in the oven. We're putting it in the middle of the oven and we're gonna put that on a timer for 15, 15 minutes. minutes. So that's on there. We're gonna have a brew and a break <laughs> and we'll be back in 15 minutes to see if it's cooked. See you then. See you later. Very good. Let's have a bit more brew. Mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to trying it. It's good. What do you think? Do you think it's going to be ready after this 15 minutes or do you think it's going to need some a bit longer? It's my hope that it's ready because it smells yummy. <laughs> and I can smell now when I can smell the chocolate melting as well, which is it's always a good smell. Mm -hmm. What we didn't say that we we could have said is that you could put um something like cinnamon in if you oh, like that yes, flavor. flavor i was just thinking about that because we were talking about what it would smell like mm. so if you really like ginger flapjack or cinnamon oh. flapjack you just put a tiny bit of um dried cinnamon or ginger in if you've apple got it and gin uh, apple and ginger oh we might try that later <laughs> some nuts did you say nuts earlier? oh i didn't you said as long as you've not got a nut allergy everything just put it you, in if you've got some um oh, what, what nuts do you think would be good oh Oh, it's done. Maybe walnuts. We like walnuts or, um, in this something like that. Okay, so Esther is very carefully taking that out using her gloves. And that looks pretty yummy, doesn't it? it looks Look at nice that. And brown. So, so we're going to put it down on top of our hob because we put it on our work surface, it's a bit too hot. If you've got a mat or something, you might want to put it down on a mat. And the important thing with flapjack is that you don't try and get it out of the tin straight away. So you nope. might think, oh, I really want to eat it. Don't do that. A, really hot, you'll burn yourself. And B, it will not stick together if you take it out at this point. So what you need to do instead is to just do a simple slice. You don't need a knife because that'll scratch your tin, but with something like a spatula. Um, mm -hmm. And we want to create six pieces of flapjack out of this. So we're gonna go all the way down the middle one way, and I'm literally just pushing this down to create a gap so that we create the separate pieces. So I've gone all the way down the middle and then I've done that vertically. You want to go horizontally across um, and you want to do a third and then after two thirds. So we'll just create six pieces. They don't need to be really even. If I create them slightly unevenly, then that's quite normal. I'll give the small ones to Esther <gasps> and the big ones to me. That's, that's so uh, rude. I think that's fair. I think, I think that is fair. I'm going to show these guys what this looks fair. like. So there we go. And again, don't touch it without oven gloves on, it'll yep. still be hot. These tiny ones that are up by me, they're cat's pieces. And those <laughs> big ones at the bottom, they're fine. Um, but you can see they're kind of rectangles, a bit like a flag shape. So we're just going to leave them there to set and to uh, cool down all by themselves. We'll probably come back in about half an hour because we really don't want them to be warm at all for our next bit. Because what are we going to do next? We're going to ice them, turn them into St George's flags. Lovely. Okay. So, um, Oh, I really want to lick this. It's got chocolate. Definitely on. try not to rush this. Mm -hmm. Go away, play a game, do your daily exercise, whatever it is you need to do, and then come back in about half an hour. We'll see you then. Hi again. Hi, Em. So we went back after half an hour and it wasn't quite cool. So we have left it a little bit longer and actually we snuck ours into the fridge. <laughs> just for five minutes, just to take the final bit of warmth out. But if you're a bit more patient than us, or it's a less warm day, <laughs> then you could probably just wait. Yeah. So we're now going to take the flapjack out of the baking tray and pop it onto a cooling rack. It's no longer warm, so it doesn't have to go on a cooling rack, but it just stops it going soggy if you put it on a plate. So I've got our oh, nice flapjack here. I've got, I think this is called a spatula. Yep. Esther thinks it might be called a mini fish slice. The big ones are fish slices or spatulas, whatever you've got. Answers on a postcard. Anything like that, or a wooden yep. spatula. You could use a knife, but it would scratch your tin. So try and avoid that if you can. I'm just going to go all the way around the edge and loosen the flapjack. So I'm just, as you can see there, sticking it down the edge and then going back down the lines that we put in when we first got it out of the oven. And then once we've gone all the way around doing that, that looks pretty good. 
I'm gonna try and take out our first slice. Now the first one is always the worst one to get out. So it might be a mess, but we'll see. So we'll just make sure that's nice and ready and loose there. Ooh, and there hey, we go. That's Look at not that. <laughs> so we'll pop that onto our tray and then we'll take out the others. And once we've got them all out, we are gonna turn these into our flags. Now for this, we are going to use icing. So we're gonna use icing, sugar and water, and then we're going to use strawberries. Now we are fully aware that we said we were gonna try new things that you'd already got in your house. So do not worry if you've not got icing sugar, if you've not got any icing, if you've not got any strawberries. Um, first of all, you can just enjoy these as flapjacks. Because they're delicious. <laughs> and secondly, it's a wonderful opportunity to be really creative mm -hmm. and think about how you could get a St George's cross on top of there. So even if it's not red, you could put something in, you could bake something in, your, yeah. your chocolate that you added, rather than mixing it in, well, that in we light. added, that you might have added, you could put it in as you begin to bake yeah. it and it might come out as a nice cross. You could put sultanas in and push them into the mixture just before you bake it and then you'd have your nice uh, shape. Yeah. And also, if you um, have got icing sugar, so you can make icing, but you haven't got strawberries, then there's loads of other things you could put on. Strawberry laces. <gasps> oh, you like strawberry, strawberry laces, laces, don't you? Uh, Smarties or Skittles. Skittles. Um, you could... Um, you could use red grapes if you cut them in a lot. If you could put them in a would be nice. All things that aren't red. I'm sure we wouldn't mind. <laughs> no. It's quite nice to be creative. So anything you want to, to make these into flags or just enjoy them as flapjacks. So now we've got those ready. Esther is going to slice up our strawberries ready. So we were mm -hmm. fortunate to get these from the lovely Kathleen's down the road. How bright red they are! I'm I was so, so excited surprised. about eating these. I came back yesterday with far too much fruit and veg because I got very excited about things like bright red strawberries. So I'm going to chop them into very small pieces so that we can sprinkle them into the shape because they're actually quite large to go on the size of flapjack we've got. So if I do slices, it'll cover the whole thing. So you I'm going to potentially just tell. Do that by our excitement that we haven't had that much fresh fruit for the last few days. <laughs> and while Esther is doing that, I'm gonna mix our icing up. So I've just got some regular icing sugar in this jar. And um, for every spoon, heaped dessert spoon of icing sugar, I'm gonna add a flat dessert spoon of cold water. So I'll show you that up here. I'm just gonna put my bowl up here so that you can see it. Just got an ordinary little bowl there. And I've got one heaped spoon of ice and sugar goes into there. And then I'll add to that cold water, just a flat spoon of cold water in there. And we'll need some more than that, especially if you're icing them all. I'm not going to ice all of ours right now. Um, so do another one of those and another one of those. And I'm going to mix that together just using an ordinary teaspoon. Now you do want to do this very gently to start with because icing sugar has a tendency of going absolutely everywhere. It's possibly the messiest thing that you can have in a kitchen. And, and Kat's not wearing her apron today. So let's that is be true. honest. I realised earlier that we were doing the whole how-to video with my apron <laughs> in the background. <laughs> so uh, remember to wear aprons or clothes you don't mind getting messy, folks. And don't do what I've done. Although I did think that the whole flat cap, necker and apron might be a little bit too much. I mean, I think it was probably too much anyway, wasn't it, really? <laughs> it's a lot of colours, isn't it? With Let's be honest. So I've mixed that together and actually I've got too much water in there. That is a little bit too runny and I've just poured it onto our worktop, which is a hilarious thing that happens sometimes when you're trying to show things to the camera. So Twice, in fact, without today. adding any water, <laughs> I'm gonna put another heaped uh, dessert spoon. I'm gonna put two more in there actually of um, icing sugar. So at the moment we've got two flat spoons uh, of flat dessert spoons of cold water in there and four heaped dessert spoons of icing sugar. Icing is one of those things I never bother weighing out the amount. It might give you instructions on your box mm. which might be better to follow than what I'm doing right now but I just kind of like to mix it and when it's about the right thickness then crack on. So for these we want the icing to be quite sticky 
because otherwise it's just going to run off and also we want that white colour to come through for our flags so that has created quite a good consistency and this time I'm not going to pour it on our worktop because <laughs> it's thicker so you want it if you can see there it does run off the spoon but it is quite thick and gloopy so top tip for when you're doing icing you probably already know this because you're all really clever but if you get some warm water so our kettle boiled a little bit ago so it's not boiling hot I'm going to get some of that and just pop it in a mug again if you're a bit younger make sure you get some help with this you do not want to scold yourself that would be bad so mug with some warm water in and another teaspoon and what we're going to do with my icing mix I'm going to take a teaspoon's worth and I'm gonna dollop that onto this flapjack here one of the nice big ones I'm just gonna put it all in the middle and then I'm going to get my teaspoon that's got warm water in the warm water and I'm gonna use the back of that to spread this over my piece of flapjack this is the same technique that we use to smooth out our hot cross buns with oh, the yes. hot spoon and then make it less sticky so it doesn't the icing doesn't stick to the spoon it's fabulous you can use it in so many things and i needed a bit more than i'd put on initially so i've put another teaspoon's worth on there do you know what this looks like it looks like melted marshmallow oh it does yeah you could definitely do use my uh, marshmallows if you're really careful when you melt them you add a tiny little bit of water to a pan and then you put them in on a really low heat and then they turn into this gloopy white mm. mess um that would be really good especially if you're um, it would be really sweet <laughs> it would be really sweet but if your uh flapjack hasn't stuck together very well that would also hold it together ah good thinking so, there you go. so that's not the neatest thing in the world but as you know from our hot cross buns you can make them much neater <laughs> uh, so i'm going to show you that there that is one piece of flapjack with some white icing on and whilst your icing is still wet you're going to get your little bits of strawberry and I'll let her straight explain this while she does it. Or whatever else you're doing. And the idea is that the icing is going to dry and hold our fruit or whatever we've used. That piece is too big. Uh, in place on our nice red cross for our St George's flag. So that what are these called again, Kat? <laughs> she just wants to mock me. She just wants <laughs> to take the mick out of me. I think a fantastic name for these would be St George's flag jack because <laughs> they look like St George's flags I mean St. come George's on flags and their flapjack I mean it's a good I excuse think, isn't it for icing you know, and strawberries if I wasn't committed to working to the church I could make millions off of that <laughs> I mean I definitely can't but there we go so we're just going to make another one here so we've got one each but then I won't bore you with watching us do all six so there's Jumping in there. there. Oh, that bit of gonna get some plates out because obviously we're gonna eat them right now. Look at these. Hang on. Oh. Now this obviously isn't a tradition in the way that hot cross buns was, and there are some traditions around St George's Day. You can make St George's biscuits and you might want to look those up but like we said right at the beginning we're trying not to use another recipe with flour in at the moment so that's why we've gone for something a little bit different so we've got one each there and if you remember from our hot cross bun video before we eat them we just want to give thanks and I hold yours for you it was a wooden one we used on our hot cross bun video but we've now done another video showing you how to make your own grace cube so check that out on our youtube See, channel some space if we've not done it yet and i'm going to roll that and then we'll pray okay oh. are you ready let's pray one two three four five thank you god that i'm alive oh i'm going to fingers six seven eight nine ten thank you god for food oh, amen amen right okay should we show these really delicious looking things <laughs> we're, we're a bit high up there there you go, there you, go. Are you ready <laughs> Okay, let's okay. enjoy. Mine's got loads of chocolate in this Ooh. bit. 